Hey, this is our second video for the critical question, what are the priority issues for improving Australia's health uh, for health priorities in Australia? We are looking at high levels of preventable chronic disease, injury and mental health problems, but this video is only going to look at cardiovascular disease. So our learn two is what I'm gonna focus on here. Our learn two asks you to analyze and research cardiovascular disease, cancer and one other. So we're gonna do the cardiovascular disease. We need to investigate the nature of the problem, the extent of the problem, uh, particularly note there that it says trend, so we need to know what the trend is at the moment. Uh, risk factors and protective factors for these um, chronic conditions, uh, and the social, cultural, socioeconomic, and environmental determinants. Uh, we also need to have a good idea of what groups are at risk of having cardiovascular disease. So, uh, cardiovascular, let's talk about the nature of it. What is cardiovascular disease? It is uh, basically any disease of the cardiovascular system. Okay, so that's gonna be coronary heart disease, heart attacks, angina, it's gonna be stroke, it's gonna be myocardial infarctions, arrhythmias, heart failures, uh, takes on a number of diseases all fit underneath cardiovascular disease. So this is actually like an umbrella term to refer to any disease of the cardiovascular system. Now, one of the major causes of a lot of these diseases is a thing called atherosclerosis. Now, atherosclerosis, uh, you can see in this image here, uh, is essentially the buildup of plaque after, we'll have a slight bit of damage that happens to an artery wall, uh, which then causes plaque buildup, and then you'll have some cholesterol that builds up on it and fatty deposits. And eventually, if that artery closes too far or gets blocked too far, uh, blood can't get through at a rate high enough to actually get oxygen to the cells that need it, which then causes those cells to die. Uh, and whatever cell it is, so if it's a heart cell, then it's a heart attack. If it's a brain cell, it's, a, it's gonna be a stroke. Uh, we're blocking the oxygen from getting to the cells, causing death. When we're looking at the extent of cardiovascular disease in Australia, it used to be the number one cause of death. It used to be the number one cause of burden of disease uh, in Australia, but that's now been taken over by cancer and cardiovascular disease is now sitting at number two. Uh, having said that though, still one in five Australians have cardiovascular disease and there's over a million hospitalizations that occur for it. Uh, we're, it's gonna account for about 30% of deaths in Australia and that's dr been dropping and that's dropped a lot over the last uh, 10 years. So you can see on this graph, for example, massive decline. And so our trend, our trend for cardiovascular disease going down, okay? A downward trend for cardiovascular disease. Uh, let's talk about some risk and protective factors. Your risk factors are things like having a family history of cardiovascular disease. If you are a smoker, if you are overweight or obese, if you have hypertension, if you have dyslipidemia, which means that you have high low density uh, cholesterol, but you have uh, low high density cholesterol, means you're more likely to have cardiovascular disease. Uh, some protective factors though are things like doing exercise. Yes, uh, eating lots of fruit and eating lots of veggies, two of the things I love to do the most and then obviously getting some regular health checks to make sure that you're screening and checking and identifying any kind of signs for cardiovascular disease early. Some social cultural determinants of cardiovascular disease. Uh, when we're looking at family and peers who participate in risk factors or who avoid protective factors. So if your parents are smoking, then you suffer passive smoking. Uh, if your parents eat really junk food, then you're more likely to have to eat junk food as you grow up. Uh, and then also are more likely to eat junk food as you're older. And so that means you're more likely to get cardiovascular diseases. Uh, our, in Australia, we have a culture around sport. We have a culture of a uh, growing culture of going to the gym. Uh, and that is helpful in promoting uh, and reducing cardiovascular disease. And we've done massive stuff for reducing smoking. And smoking actually has changed in my lifetime from being something that is really cool that people just, everyone did, to now being something that if you smoke, uh, generally you'll look down on and people really don't like it. Uh, so it's beginning to change, uh, but we still have that culture of eating out. Um, we have a culture of eating junk food still, uh, which still needs to shift in the right direction for us. Uh, socioeconomic determinants. Uh, people with low socioeconomic status are more likely to participate in risk behaviors and are more likely to then have cardiovascular disease. So the lower your income, the lower your education, the lower paid work that you do, uh, means you're more likely to be smoking, you're more likely to be drinking, you're more likely to be eating uh, junk food uh, because you can't afford the, the nicer, healthier food at a restaurant, you'll instead go to something like McDonald's or KFC. Uh, we have higher rates of cardiovascular disease in our blue collar workforce. 
Uh, people who are less educated on health are more likely to participate in risk factors and less education also means that you have less choice for your employment and so you're more likely to choose a job or uh, be limited in your choice of job which results in you being uh, possibly doing work that exposes you to chemicals or something uh, that will make you more likely to get a cardiovascular disease. So if you are working somewhere like in a mine where there's higher pollution in the air, then you're more likely to get cardiovascular disease. Some environmental determinants. Uh, so definitely we have higher rates of cardiovascular disease in rural and remote areas, particularly higher rates of death uh, or mortality as a result of cardiovascular disease in those areas, which has mostly got to do with their lack of access uh, to services and technologies uh, that they need. Some groups who are at greater risk of getting cardiovascular disease include the elderly, people who smoke, people who are inactive, uh, people who have a family history, uh, our ATSI population, people with low socioeconomic status, people who live in rural or remote areas. Uh, they're all examples of groups who are more likely to get cardiovascular disease.